Hi guys, I'm back again today with another reaction video and today we are continuing with our TikTok compilation series of revert stories. So we're doing part two. If you haven't seen part one, it will be in the end screen. Anyways, uh, before we do start, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already click that bell button to get notified whenever I do upload a video. So guys, let's check this out. Ooh. I got through family, like I was baptized and everything, but I feel like my mom. <laughs> I wasn't expecting the British accent. I was expecting American, but not British. So I was born into like a Catholic family, like I was baptized and everything, but I feel like my mom only done that though. just so me and my little sister could get into the only good school in this area, which happened to be a Catholic school, and you had to be Catholic to get into. Oh. And my mom was just hella smart. So like ever since birth to like year nine ish. I didn't know if I believed in God or not. I was like, maybe, maybe not. I didn't really care. Come to year nine, that's when I started learning a lot about Islam. Oh. And, you know, I remember thinking to myself, I was like, oh, this is what I want to do. This, I want to revert. And I remember, like, I was like, I want to revert. I asked my parents, mom, I want to revert to Islam. She was like, no. I was like, <clears throat> that shit kind of hurt it. But the, I was like 13, 14. I was a kid. You feel like, I didn't care. I was like, okay, my mom said I can't, then I can't. I was a kid. So come to year 10, that's when I start believing in the shaitan. I start believing, oh, everything is a coincidence, even though it makes no sense that everything is literally so perfect. It's all a coincidence. Shaitan was living rent free up here, mate. I remember in year 11, I was literally debating with my friend, like, oh, Allah can't exist because, like, the universe is ever expanding. He was like, but that's mentioned the Quran. I was like, bro. And I remember every time I'd make an argument, he just had to peak his comeback, bro. It was just like, bro, mm -hmm. where are you getting this from? I'm gonna I'm gonna skip a few chapters, but fast forward to like January of this year, I start really looking into Islam. Like I'm watching lectures, I'm talking to all my friends every day. I'm on the phone to my friend telling him, "Yo, tell me more about Islam. Tell me more about Islam." That type of thing. One thing that really drew me into Islam was like the predictions of the Prophet Muhammad was telling me, because I was like, "How do you know yet? You the police?" Mm. Number three, that's like the peak is over at Miracle. Because like the Prophet وسلم, he predicted so many things like the two buildings and everything like that that have come true. But like people overlook it. But anyway, so like on top of all of the lectures I was watching, like I was on the phone to my friends 24-7 talking about Islam type thing. I just am drunk his voice. Thing, which I'll mm. never tell anyone apart from my wife, oh, Or my mom if she reverses, inshallah. The when the event happened, I literally sat up and I was like a lot exists like it was proof like it was I, I i can't describe it apart from it was just proof that Allah, subhanahu wa Allah exists and then on the 8th of march at 4 32 i think i took my shahada and then I mean, like, if you don't want to see the video of me taking my shahada then ask for it i'll post it oh. and then he was asking me like are your friends are poor let me just show you something so literally this was gifted to me by my best friend Taz after my first ever drummer. So I went drummer for my first ever drummer and I was gifted this. Aww. My brother Anwar literally just gave me all of these books and also gave me the Quran as well, which is mashallah. Also got given this, uh, this oh, prayer wow. mat, super cozy. It looks I so good. Well. I got other gifts as well, but this is just only some of them. Oh. <laughs> of course you <laughs> Of course, he would do something like that. I don't know him like that, but he, he looks like the type that would do something like that. But anyways, let's move to the next video. But before that, we have to see this again. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, everybody, welcome. Today, I'm going to be reacting to the story of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, I've had a lot of backlash from that last video about where I asked the question, do you expect me to believe this? Do you expect me to believe this? Have you lost your mind? I'm not saying that you as Christians have lost your mind. I absolutely do disagree with what you believe. But I'm saying, have you lost your mind that you expect me to accept that? I don't accept that belief. Please don't come at me with that belief. Are you crazy that I would go back to that? So that was the intention of that video, and I need you guys to understand that. And anytime that you come at me, I'm going to defend what I believe wholeheartedly. And that video was made because someone sparked a reaction, and that's why I made the video. Mm. Anyway, so getting into why I became Muslim. 
Guys, I was a flight attendant in the U.S. I was happy with my life. I was, I absolutely loved my job. I would do it for free. There wasn't a morning that I woke up and dreaded going to work. Okay. I was married. Was I was not living a life that I was down and out. I wasn't on drugs. I didn't drink alcohol anyway. So that wasn't a problem in my life. I'm not a smoker. I lived a relatively good life. Went to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesdays when I was at home and not flying. So I wasn't looking for anything different. My life was good. Mm. A, lot, a lot of people, they turn to religion because they're at a very difficult place in their life. Most of our Since stories is like that, yeah. Introduced to Islam, I did feel like inside me, I wasn't believing that Jesus and God were the same. So I wrote a prayer to God because I felt like I didn't know how to pray. And in this book, I wrote it on paper because I felt like writing it down solidified it. It made it more real. So I wrote to God, God, people only change when they are open and willing to accept anything to make that change. And I humble myself and I'm open and I'm willing to understand and to make any changes that need to be done. I was literally asking for God to change me, to understand Christianity better, and to not have those doubts about God and Jesus being the same. So that was where my head was geared, toward that, not towards anything else. But I wrote down I was loving to accept any change. Part two next. Oh, I was okay. And I, I thought you had to wait. Better. So I wrote that prayer. Moving forward, it was a long day. I had worked seven flights that day, no. six or seven, and we had just picked up a new location for the airline that I worked for. And this new location, my laptop is. Um, there are a lot of older people flying on the plane that night. We have a rule as a flight attendant: you're not allowed to leave the aircraft until all of the passengers are out the aircraft. Okay, and I was what you call a commuter. So once I got to Atlanta and finished my job, I needed to get on one more plane to get home, and that was to Pensacola, Florida. Oh, so that once flight. I landed, there were 16 wheelchairs on the plane, and we were running close. We were running it close. I we actually parked next to the gate where the Pensacola flight was parked, right next to us, and I literally saw my airplane. And I'm waiting for 16 wheelchairs to come and take these people off the plane, and I can't leave. So, one by one, they're leaving. I'm counting down the minutes. I need to get to that other plane because I'm not going to be going home tonight if I don't make it to that plane. Oh. Literally, when the last wheelchair passenger rolled out of the aircraft, I grabbed my bags, I rolled up even past them on the jet bridge, ran to the other aircraft, and the gate agent was already gone. The aircraft was at the gate, but the gate agent was gone from the podium. And I saw the canopy being pulled back from the aircraft. So I stood there at the window hoping maybe the pilots would see me and have a heart and say, oh, great, I'm going on the plane. But that didn't happen. I sat down at the gate area for a moment. My mouth. Because I was really mad. I was going to have to sleep in the crew room that night and I wasn't going home. Then I decided, well, hey, maybe, maybe Delta has a late flight. I'll go look up the boards and see if Delta has a flight. I'm standing there looking at the boards and I'm so angry and it's been such a long day that as I'm looking at the boards, I can't even make sense of the letters on the boards. Like I can't even find what I'm looking for. I actually stood there longer than any normal person would because I was so frustrated in my head that I was sleeping at the airport. I'm standing there looking up and I hear a voice. And this voice says, I don't know you, but I know you. Part three, next. I'm standing there looking up and I hear a voice. And this voice says, I don't know you, but I know you. And so I look up and it's a pilot for oh. the airline. And, you know, crew have a bad reputation. And I wasn't in the place to even want to communicate with anybody. I was angry. I had had a very long day. I was tired in my high heels. I wanted to go home. I wasn't going home. So I wasn't very receptive to this person and I thought that it was a pickup line. And so I was like, uh-huh, yeah. And so that's what my response was. It was rude, it was rude, I was rude. And I am not actually a rude person. He 
was very nice. He kind of smiled. I remember his smile to this day. He was, and he, he retreated, quickly retreated. And he was like, oh, I didn't mean anything by that. And I was like, uh-huh. And he said, okay, well, I can see you've had a day. Have a good night. And as he turned to walk away, I felt bad. Like I was just mean to this person for no reason. And why, why was I mean to him? So as he's walking away, I'm like, hey, 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 you know what? I'm really sorry. It's been a really long day. And told him that I shouldn't have acted that way toward him. I missed my flight home. And he said, that's what I meant by, I don't know you, but I know you. I'm in the same situation. I figured you probably missed your flight. I missed my flight too. Uh -huh. He was a commuter. He was going to Houston. He wasn't going home that night either. I looked at his name tag and it said, Omar, <laughs> because oh, that's how I pronounced it then, was Omar. So I, in the U.S., someone who's named Omar is normally um, not of white descent, and this man looked white. Oh. So I'm looking at him trying to figure out what his nationality is. Like, is he African American? Is he Hispanic? What is he? I said to him, your name is Omar? Your name is Omar? Omar? And he's like, yeah. My name's Omar, part four, next. Okay. People have been asking about. I need to know that lady's story. Come on, I'm invested. Yeah, exactly. I need to know, I, I want to know too. <laughs> I'm going to look for that and react to it. I need to see her whole story. I'm definitely. Oh my gosh, what is this? This for a bit, so here it Don't is. Don't Omar. This is going to be my conversion story. It is going to be multiple parts because it's really long, but here we go. So, back in the summer of 2016, I was doing this research program. Down my laptop at the is not Canada happy Ann today. Arbor. So and loud. My program consisted of uh, 40 research fellows. And me being the extrovert I am, the first day I went around and introduced myself to everybody. Good and for you, I can Both Muslim women. They didn't know each other before, but they just kind of congregated together because they were like, ah, more hijabis. Like, you know how it goes. So I walk up to them and, you know, I ask them like, oh, who are you? Where are you from? Kind of thing. And I got all sorts of different answers like, oh, I'm from Somalia. I'm from Bangladesh. A whole sorts of thing. But then one of them said that she was from Detroit. And I said, oh, okay, where are your parents from? Yes, I was one of those people. I'm sorry. <laughs> and she said, my parents are from here. They're from Detroit. I'm a convert. Stay tuned for part two. All right, here's part two. Okay, so when she said she was a convert, I was very thrown, okay? I grew up in a very small town. And in history class, when we learned about Islam, we didn't really learn that much about it. We just learned about the five... At like least you learned it. I don't really, really think I've what they heard this in schools before. But the overall before. premise was that it was a very oppressive religion. So True, that's I what thought, they say, though. like many Americans think now, that Islam was a very oppressive religion, particularly towards women. So I started asking her so many questions, and the first one was, but you're a woman, why would you convert? Actually, I think, yeah, one of our comments always say that it's like i can't believe you're a woman and you believe in this like i get that a lot <laughs> like you guys are so dumb but anyways that's your problem right it's not ours mashallah she handled it very well and she told me it's not oppressive and i start good for them I, I don't know how to handle any situation in life calmly like i am so calm and if you break that i get super like Arr! so just leave me here because there's no in between for me there's no like warm it's either cold or hot there's no normal temperature so for people to answer in a calm manner or to answer in a very like respectful way that is really really like i admire people like that because i cannot started asking all these questions and she answered them perfectly and then she started telling me about ramadan and like the deeper meaning behind the ramadan and i thought it was very nice the way that she pronounced and so the ramadan good i had either her. just started I mean, or it was starting soon I'm envious. so i decided to try it Stay not the right word part three. okay part three so i didn't tell anybody but i was trying to fast during ramadan that year and i lasted four days 
the first three I didn't know you couldn't have water and then I gave up after the fourth day because oh. I was not good at managing my water intake like at all so then the next year 2017 comes around and I'm like you know what I'm gonna fast the whole time oh guys you want me to try this um is it this yeah this year this 2022 Ramadan I'm gonna try I'm gonna vlog it for you guys I think I'm gonna die and maybe I will not have interest to do any videos oh you know what let me know in the comment like what how i should go about it like should i do it with also how do you say this like since i do reaction videos do i also not react to music oh gosh of mercy my channel is gonna be dead <laughs> um should i avoid like certain videos also let me know because it's gonna be interesting imagine and we'll see how long we're gonna go i hope we can last 30 days or even at least two weeks except i didn't know that it moved so i ended up just fasting the last two weeks because i didn't realize it went back 10 days every year then 2018 comes what? around I'm like this time i'm determined let me know the I date i'm confused the prayer app so i knew exactly when it started and oh, stopped maybe i have to get and that during this time my friend Massa had found out that I was fasting. And in my area, during Ramadan on Saturdays, my masjid has weekly iftars, oh, like group iftars. I won't. So she invited me to one of those, and I was like, free food? Hell yeah. Stay tuned for part four. Don't cut me off this time. Part. All right, here we go, part four. So I meet up with Massa at the masjid, and it's about 10 minutes before Maghrib, and she's like explaining everything to me. So she taught me how to say Bismillah, it's time to break the fast, and we break our fast with a date. She gives me some dates, oh, and some wine. Oh, she says, okay, now I have to pray, but if you want, you can go to the gym and get the food. And I was like, you know what, I'd actually like to see you pray. This sounds interesting. And she said, okay, so she found me a spot in the back to sit and watch. And while they were praying, I, can't explain it, I got this very intense feeling. When they went down into sujood, wallah, the room got brighter my heart started pumping and i just got this feeling that like I why does i get this feeling the right place in my life so immediately after they were done praying i started asking them so many questions like what was it what did all that mean what were they doing okay i lied there's gonna be a part five so oh. for part five <laughs> okay part five and the final part so i started asking them yeah you say that there's gonna be part six all of them got answered which i love I had my own Quran in English and I started reading oh. it every day and I was just falling so Oh my gosh, down. I still haven't gone to check my P.O. box. Oh my gosh, I have to check it because the Quran was going to be sent, right? And I didn't check it. <laughs> Why do I always forget? When am I going out? Maybe on Monday maybe on Monday I'll get it. So that Tuesday we can check it out. Maybe. Yeah, Tuesday and you guys will see the video on Wednesday. So check out in the channel of us opening i have to write things down because if i don't write anything down or if i don't put it in my calendar i will forget there are some reactions maybe it has been re requested three years ago but i still haven't done it because i just forget there's so many things one of Massa's friends and now my friend dana gave me my first hijab that i, put I on need to meet masjid. masa i bought a couple hijabs for myself and some more modest clothes and i started wearing hijab during ramadan and a little bit after but and now I was going to Lisbon for a fellowship like two weeks after Ramadan ended, so I couldn't wear it there. My parents were going to see pictures. So I told myself, okay, if I feel the same way when I come back, then I will convert. The whole time I was there, I just wanted to take my shahada. I was leaving the group, like going around Lisbon by myself, wearing hijab, reading Quran in coffee, shop. coffee shops. It was amazing. I came back to the U.S. on a Thursday night and I converted the next day at Friday prayer. Best decision I ever made. Alhamdulillah. I want to know what the parents thought. That's one thing. And secondly, my parents, they don't care. Uh, I mean, when I say they don't care, it means like as long as you have faith in a creator, they're fine. As long as you are not an evil person, you're not doing bad, they're fine with that like that is something that i really admire is because if you have the support of your family or your parents amazing because some parents are wild they will literally like send you to 
like i don't know prison or something if you do crazy things crazy things to them i mean in their eyes so for my parents to be open-minded I'm, I'm blessed uh but yeah and we're old enough right we're like old so we need to have our own um like own minds but uh i want to know miss yellow omar lady flight attendant story because she didn't finish it and i need to know she had the most interesting story and she didn't even tell us the best part right so that is why let me know if there's a link to the whole thing because i really want to check it if there is none i'm still going to find it out and i have to check my mail and i have to write down all the things i need to do and put it here or else i will forget again but let me know what you guys thought if you like this video don't forget to give this video a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already i'll see you in the next video bye